Hello, my name is Aaron Fisher, and I am the Youth Livestock and Equine Specialist in the Department of Animal Science at the University of Tennessee. I am presenting a video study series focused on swine-related topics for the Skillathon. This particular episode will focus on injections for swine. We will talk about how medications are given to swine, including the different types of injections used in swine production and the important information provided by the medicine label. It is imperative to read, understand, and follow all of the instructions on the medicine label. The medicine label includes the following important items, trade name, active ingredient, route of administration, species and animal class, approved uses, dosage, withdrawal time, cautions and warnings, sizes available, and storage requirements. Basically, the medicine label provides all of the details needed to properly administer medications to swine along with other species. The trade name is how you know most medications. For example, banamine is the trade name for flunixin. Chances are you have heard of banamine but never heard of flunixin. The route of administration is how the medication should be given. For most injectable medications, this will either be subcutaneous or intramuscular injection. It is important to only give the medication how it says on the label. The species and animal class are the only approved animals that a particular medication can be given to. This might be all swine, or only non-lactating sows, or some other combination. The dosage is how much of a medication can be given. Giving more than the correct dosage can result in a drug residue in the meat. The withdrawal time is the amount of time after a medication is given that the animal must be held before being sold or entering the food chain. Not following the withdrawal time can also lead to a drug residue in the meat. This may be the most important thing that you hear me say today. Doing anything against the label instructions is called an extra label drug use and is illegal. It is also likely to result in a drug residue in the meat and could damage the public perception of animal agriculture. Specific examples of extra label uses include giving a higher dose than what is on the label. This could be thinking that if 5 cc's are good, 10 cc's will be better. Or could be giving 5 cc's now and 5 more cc's 3 days later. It is also an extra label use to give an injection intramuscularly when it is supposed to be subcutaneous. Another that is all too common is giving a medication labeled only for swine to sheep. It is important to note that this can be done on the order of a veterinarian through a valid VCPR or veterinarian client patient relationship. But this is the only way this can be done. You cannot choose to do this on your own. When in doubt about anything on the medicine label, it is important to consult a licensed veterinarian that is familiar with your swine herd. As we said earlier, the withdrawal time is the amount of time after a drug is given to a particular animal in which that animal would be safe to enter the food chain. Proper record keeping is critical to ensure that withdrawal times are followed. Not observing withdrawal times for medications is likely to lead to a meat residue. The three most common routes of administration of injections are subcutaneous, intramuscular, and intravenous. Subcutaneous injections are given under the skin. Intramuscular injections are given directly into the muscle. Intravenous injections are given directly into the vein. IV injections are typically reserved for veterinarians. Intramuscular injections should be given in the neck region just behind and below the ear but in front of the shoulder. 
you should never inject into the ham or the loin. This can lead to tissue site damage, which is cut away during the harvesting process and decreases the value of the carcass and increases the potential for a drug residue in the meat. For small pigs, subcutaneous injections should be given in the loose flaps of skin in the elbow or the flank. In larger pigs, subcutaneous injections should be given in the neck behind the ear. Administering injections in other areas of the animal can lead to tissue site damage, which is cut away during the harvesting process and decreases the value of the carcass and increases the potential for a meat residue. Needles come in all sizes. The size of a needle opening is measured by gauge. The smaller the gauge, the larger the needle opening. For example, a 14 gauge needle is much larger than an 18 gauge needle. 18 to 20 gauge needles should be used with baby pigs. The size needle will increase as the pigs mature with 16 gauge needles for finishing pigs and breeding stock. Typically, longer needles are used for intramuscular injections compared to subcutaneous injections. Up to a 1.5 inch needle would be used for intramuscular injections for breeding stock, while 1 inch needles would be used for subcutaneous injections to the same animals. We will finish up with some pork quality assurance basics. A new needle is recommended for each new animal. If a needle is bent, it should be discarded immediately. Never straighten it and use it again. This is extremely dangerous as it could break off in the animal. You can see in the microscopic view of needles in the picture how the end of the needle curls after multiple uses. Would you want to be injected with the needle on the bottom right? I know that I would not and likely pigs won't either. If giving injections to multiple animals, be sure to use a separate needle to withdraw medicine from the bottle and give the injection to the animal. Never put a needle back into the bottle after using it to inject an animal. Used needles should be discarded into an appropriate sharps container. An empty milk jug makes for a good homemade sharps container. Your vet is a good resource for discarding used needles once the sharp container is full. Regardless of route of administration, only 10 cc's should be given per injection site. If more than 10 cc's are indicated, then it should be split across multiple injections. Remember, the animal has two sides of the neck area. We mentioned this briefly before, but it is important to have a working relationship with a veterinarian and for them to be familiar with your swine operation. This is necessary for a valid veterinary client patient relationship or VCPR. For more pork quality assurance resources, please check out the YQCA program at yqca.org. Youth for the Quality Care of Animals is a multi-species quality assurance program for youth. YQCA certification is required for many regional, state, and national shows, including state 4-H and FFA livestock shows in Tennessee. There is also an adult pork quality assurance program. For more information, check out the PQA page at the National Pork Board website. That wraps up our discussion of injections to swine. The most important points to remember is to always read and follow all of the instructions on the medicine label and to consult a veterinarian for any questions or concerns. You are an important player in protecting the food supply and public perception of animal agriculture. I leave you with this challenge. Will you take this responsibility seriously? I wish you the best of luck as you progress through your swine project. Please let me know if I can ever be of assistance. Thank you and have a great day.